okay good morning students uh, so today our lecture is all about uh, breeding objectives then thereafter we will learn why we need to breed uh, self pollinated crops cross pollinated crops and uh, vegetative propagated crops and uh, at the end i will give you a brief description about the breeding procedures so today three topics we are going to cover very first is the breeding objective then concept of breeding like why we are going for the modification of genetic content and uh, uh, like what is the concept what is the basis like in case of self and cross all the vegetative procedures they are different so these all are the contents that we will be discussing uh, very first you must be familiar with the aim of the plant breeding thereafter we will come to our topic that is objectives also we will learn about the scope of plant breeding and then certain undesirable effects then concept and then breeding procedures so here is the aim of plant breeding uh, since we have covered two lectures so i just i am expecting like you all are much familiar with the aim of the plant breeding and that is very simple that is it is all about the improvement of characteristics of plant so that they are more desirable in terms of agronomic and in terms of economic why we are going for the modifications because we want higher yield then we want the improved quality of the crop then we want our crop species to be resistant against any kind of abiotic uh, uh, say diseases uh abiotic stresses like uh, the stresses which are no more alive like drought when there is no more availability of water that is said to be drought conditions when there is a uh, soil uh, nature varies within the when salt nature varies within the soil we call it as a soil salinity then is the extreme temperature uh, because sometimes what happens like uh, uh, crops are no more uh, crops are no more uh, Uh, like uh, adaptable to the increase of the temperature they cannot withstand the higher temperature uh, then heat wind cold frost that means uh, we want our variety to no more be affected by all these parameters next we also want uh, uh next we also want uh, next we also want uh, our uh, uh, we also want our variety to be uh, to be not affected by the biotic factors biotic means living factors see when we talk for the environment in the environment we have only two kinds of factors one are biotic components and another we have in the environment abiotic components biotic name itself indicates that means the living components and abiotic means non living components when we talk for the living components these can be the attack of the insects it can be the attack of diseases and uh, when we say abiotic characteristics which are non living in the nature uh, these are these involve uh, like a salt soil salinity then temperature and so on all the factors that i have discussed actually what happens if say this is our variety sometimes our variety cannot withstand these conditions that means neither they can withstand the attack of the insect that means i will use here one term that is they are susceptible uh, to the attack of insect they are susceptible to the attack of insect susceptible means anything can come and attack a variety and variety is unable to protect itself from the attack of any kind of insect if it is but if we go for the breeding if we go for the breeding technology then as a result of breeding we can go for the modification of as a result of breeding we can go for the modification of genetic material and uh, once uh, genetic material is modified then the characters which were susceptible to the attack of insect they can be modified 
and as a result now our variety is a kind of resistant variety and now if insect attacks then insect is no more uh, insect can no more uh, cause any dangerous effect to the variety so this is all about breeding objectives like uh, because if it is not affected by the uh, any attack of the insect then obviously it will grow it will adapt to the environmental conditions and it will give you more yield so this is a uh, biotic resistance then we can change uh, uh, the maturity duration earliness several advantages of breedings are there like uh, some crops are like they require less crop management period and uh, so sometimes we can also go for the crop rotation maturity in by going through the breeding maturity has been reduced from 270 days to 170 days uh, in terms of cotton if we talk for the pigeon pea then it is decreased to 120 days and if we talk for the sugar cane maturity period is decreased from 360 to 270 days i mean to say uh, like with the breeding we can go for the modifications of many features the crop species which were earlier taking 360 days to mature but after uh, these are its genetic content is modified it is getting mature in 270 days itself that is we can go for change in maturity duration then determinate growth But normally we don't know determinate growth see if the its uh, period is decreasing to this day so we know like in this much period it is going to grow so that means we have determinate growth period with us then dormancy uh, period uh, can be reduced because what happens seed germinate before harvesting right like in case of green gram black gram barley pea period of dormancy Uh, is introduced into these crops so to avoid any loss due to the germination these uh, dormancy period they can be removed then desirable agronomic characteristics can be introduced within the crop species like plant height uh, plant height then growth habit erect uh, like how much state it is going to grow then uh, we can go for the removal of toxic substances also uh, like neurotoxin in kesari is responsible for causing paralysis if in uh, mistakenly consumed by the human being and uh, similarly uracil acid in in case of brassica is responsible for destruction of human health so we with the help of breeding objectives we can manipulate the crop species in a way like uh, uh, we can uh, we can uh, modify it in a way like uh, it is no more uh, producing the toxic substances and it can be very healthily uh, consumed by the human beings or by the animals then sometimes what happens plants are uh, uh, very weak that they cannot withstand the wind conditions if the wind is blowing at a very high rate then what happens all the leaves uh, uh, sometimes stems they uh, keep on shattering right so we can make uh, with the help of uh, a modification of the genetic content we can make uh, our variety resistance to shattering so this is also one of the benefit uh, uh, or say this these are the objectives of the breeding and by in, by uh, by uh, just having a, a focus on the various objectives various points which are to be improved with the help of uh, plant breeding we can easily go for its improvement then we can also go for the synchronous maturity sometimes what happen say five seeds are sown within the soil at same times but one germinates before second germinates later third germinates along with this fourth germinates later and it takes much time to germinate that means every since all the all these are of same species but they are getting mature at different different time uh, so when when the different uh, when the same crop is getting mature at different time it is very difficult to, to go for their harvesting and uh, then there comes the problems in terms of storage so what so to avoid all these problems what we can go for we can go for improvement of uh, uh, improvement of genetic content and as a result we can cause all the as a result we can cause all the uh, seeds to grow at the same time only uh, like in case of green pea cow pea castor cotton it is a uh, uh, normally observed like uh, same same species uh, is growing at different different times then 
certain species used to be like they are very sensitive to the light they are very sensitive to the temperature conditions but uh, with the help of plant breeding we can make those species insensitive to the light and temperature so that they can be cultivated in new new areas right with the help of uh, plant breeding we can make uh, a variety to get adapt to the a uh, wider range of environmental conditions and as a result it helps in stabilizing the crop production over regions and seasons and uh, with the help of because when we are going for the improvement as a result we are uh, as a result we have a new variety so traditionally maize khari that that is able to grow as its rabi and jad crops i mean to say we uh, as a result because when we are going for the lots and lots of modification then as a result we can have the varieties those varieties which were earlier being grown in a cert, certain another season but now they can be grown in another season for example maize kharif crop they uh, we are able to grow a uh, traditional maize and kharif crop but able to grow it as a rabi and jaid crops also that means there is now uh, being the variation in the season and uh, when variation in the season is taking place then that means we can grow uh, those species in the new environment or in the new season also right so these all are the uh, objectives of the plant breeding next we will talk for the scope of plant breeding uh, can you think what can be the future future prospects of the plant breeding very first and very important one it is going to help the mankind obviously it is going to help the mankind then uh, because we are have, uh, because we want number of desirable features and these uh, it is not like every plant is uh, fulfilled with all the desirable features in certain plant there may be certain criteria which are to be improved and in another plant there may be other criteria which are to be improved that means number of varieties can be evolved in different crop plants when we will go for the modification of these varieties as a result different varieties will be evolved obviously uh, because the varieties are with the good characteristics then it is also going to increase the food production if plant breeding if plant breeding is a uh, uh, if plant breeding is a uh, combined with molecular biology and biotechnology biotechnology then it we it is further going to brighten the prospects of confidence confidence is what like breeding is going to serve the humanity then testing of genetically modified crops it can be very easily done further uh, because we are going to evolve a number of new varieties if those new varieties are found to be uh, okay then those can be commercialized that means those particular varieties they can be uh, manufactured at a large scale for example uh, genetically engineered rice maize soya bean cotton oil seeds uh, sugar beet these all varieties have been commercialized that means they are produced at a large scale so that it is available to each and every person further we also knew like certain uh, our crop species uh, are uh, certain our crop species they are uh, crop species are no more susceptible they are susceptible to the biotic and abiotic stresses but uh, with the help of plant breeding we can go for the uh, we can go for the generation of for the production of genetically resistant varieties so these all are the scopes of plant breeding but you know but uh, it is also producing certain undesirable effects why undesirable effects see if we talk for the wild species very carefully listen if we talk for the wild species then its genetic content is of a kind that makes it adaptable to number of reasons adaptable to number of reasons right this is wild species but when we keep on manipulating uh, when we keep on interfering with the genetic content slowly and slowly uh, very first we will remove certain genes which were not required then we will see no 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 this is not the crop we require to remove certain more genes okay then we will go for the removal of second gene also then more uh, more more we will go for its modification 
more we will uh, replace its gene now when more of the uh, more and more modifications are done then this wild genetic content is now totally being changed into the new genetic content now the wild genetic content which were earlier adaptable to number of reasons now it is going to be adaptable to only a fewer reason now it will not be having the ability to grow in all the reasons it could grow only in one reason or in two reasons because modification is done on the basis of reason and when modification is done on the basis of reason we take a, a consideration of parameters which are basically we take a consideration of the parameters which are basically prevailing in this reason right i uh, suppose if we say we uh, we know like uh, temperature of this reason is 25 degree celsius humidity is also somehow five something right then modification is being done uh, in the way so that it becomes adaptable to this particular reason i mean to say conclusion comes like diversity of the crop decreases earlier it was adaptable to number of reasons but when we kept on when we kept on modifying it at uh, our desire then it became uh, then it became adaptable to one or two reason that means there is reduction in diversity now reduction in diversity why because genetic content the genetic content which was earlier very wider in the nature now it has reduced that means genetic base is also reduced and uh, there is danger of uniformity we no more no more we uh, know like uh, the variety this variety when will be grown in the same reason again and again it is going it is it is no more going to give the same results that means we always have the danger of uniformity sometimes it is not like you you must be thinking like we are going to go for the improvement of height but what happens instead of high height say it is giving a, a it is giving the production of toxic substances also that means sometimes undesirable combinations can be generated and because genetic content is uh, uh, being modified and it has become uh, narrow as a result very important as a result because see here genetic content was very vast it was very vast instead of vast i would like to say it was very wider when the genetic content was very wider it was susceptible to the number of diseases it was no more susceptible to the number of diseases but when the genetic content got narrow then as a result then as a result the crop species became susceptible to the diseases and pest right so these are the certain undesirable desirable effects of plant breeding now we will come to our second topic that is concept of plant breeding concept of plant breeding when we talk for the plant breeding we know there are basically three kinds of species which are existing very first is self pollinated then are cross pollinated and the third one are vegetatively propagated crops are basically divided into three categories so if we need to look after breeding of self breeding of cross or breeding of vegetative we need to be familiar with the mode of pollination and reproduction that is taking place in these three kinds of crop species that means before i talk for the concept of plant breeding i would like to make you all familiar like the mode of pollination and reproduction these are the two parameters on the basis of which crop plants are further divided into three categories that is self cross and vegetative again i repeat before we understand the concept of plant breeding one must be familiar like since there are two concepts taking place one is mode of pollination and another is way of reproduction that is you can say mode of reproduction on these uh, basis of these two parameters 
crow plants are further divided into three categories self crows and vegetative first i will make you familiar with the features of these uh, self crows and vegetative then will i will come to the concept of plant breeding like why we need to breed self pollinated species why we need to breed cross pollinated species why we need to breed vegetative propagated species that is all about the concept of breeding but before i actually tell you why we need to breed these 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 species we must be uh, familiar with the features of self cross and vegetative that is making the difference among the concept of plant breeding among three so we come to the very first that is self pollinated species as the name itself is indicating self means self are the ones self are the ones where seed is seed okay before i talk for the seed i will make you familiar with the structure of the plant we used to have a flower in the flower we used to have two two reproductive parts one is pollen grain and another we have another we have a, a pistil right i can call it as an anther that means one we have anther and another we have instead of pistil i will only focus to its more uh, more important part that is a stigma i am talking for a particular flower for a single flower only if in the single flower anther if in the single flower anther fuses with the stigma of the same flower then we call the species as a self fertilizing species that means now fertilization is taking place within the flower right when we say pollination is taking place a uh, within the flower we call it as a self fertilizing species that means here development is taking place by self pollination how seed is being developed here a uh, self pollination is taking place that means uh, uh, pollen grains of the same flower they are being thrusted onto the stigma of the same flower because uh, here self pollination is taking place so the seed development is as a result of self pollination and we also call this process as an autogamy because this process is known as autogamy autogamy so self pollinated species are also sometimes known as autogamous species and because they are breeding within the plant within the flower so they are also called as inbreeders very important that means self pollinated species are the species where seed development is taking place by the process that is known as self pollination but very important here anthers of the flowers they are being thrusted onto the stigma of same flower i again repeat on to the same flower plant is the same but it is a fertilization is taking place within the same flower that is self pollination but uh, what are the various features that are actually favoring the self fertilization there are i will be discussing the five parameters which are four parameters which are actually responsible for the self fertilization to take place within the flower very first is homogamy homogamy means anther and stigma this is a bisexual flowers because within this flower two kinds of sexes are present that is one is male and another is female so this is the reason it is said to be bisexual flower so homogamy is the condition where because this is a flower and we know flower is having four uh, main components out of which male and female is the are the two components right when these anthers and these stigma they are maturing at the same time that means uh, this is the anther uh, this used to be the filament and this used to be the anther this anther and on the other way stigma if we talk for the female part this used to be the stigma this used to be the style and this used to be the ovule so this is pistil overall and when we talk for the male part 
then uh, in the male part we have this uh, filament this is the filament and this is a uh, anther that is having pollen grains in it now when they are mature these two parts are within the same flower when they both mature at same time that means uh, both the parts are getting developed at the same time and uh, when they will mature pollen grains will mature they will fall onto the stigma and then slowly it will uh, grow through the style and then thereafter it will fuse with the ovule right and as a result fertilization will take place and uh, the result of fertilization is the development of seed i won't be going into the detail of pollination it is a uh, uh, much uh, uh, familiar to you all then second process is clistogamy clistogamy means this flower is no more opening if the flower is not opening no pollen grains from the outer uh, region can come and enter into the flower because pollen grains need to enter into the flower and need to uh, land on th this stigma portion uh, if uh, Uh, if uh, a cell cross pollination is to take place, but the very important thing is this flower is no more opening. When the flower is no more opening, that means internal parts are only going to fuse together. Nothing from the outside can come inside and uh, cause uh, pollination to take place. So this is clistogamy. Next is chasmogamy. In chasmogamy, flower is opening, but it has one condition. Once uh, internal fertilization has taken place. then there are certain chances like flower will open and uh, in this particular case there are chances like small amount of cross pollination may take place and the very important in the last one flower is having both the units that means male and female reproductive units uh, in the same flower they are present so this is also the reason they need not to look uh, for the pollination on the another flower so these are the features of cell pollinated species and these are the characteristics that favor self pollination now we will discuss uh, these are also the some important features of photogamous species like uh, this is now much familiar they have a kind of pollination that is said to be self pollination right uh, because see bachcha when self pollination is taking place like all the time male and female reproductive units they are mating with each other nothing from outside is entering in, inside that means every time they will uh, every time they will uh, every time they will mate they will produce the next progeny and this next progeny is going to be similar copy of the parental very important that means there is not going to take place any genetic variation that is no genetic variation is going to take place if no genetic variation is going to take place then we give it it a, it a particular term that means all the lines that means one progeny produced this is one line from this progeny next progeny will be produced that is second line that is all the lines they are going to be of homozygous nature homozygous means they are going to have same genetic material as it is present in case of parents so this is the reason because they maintain the same features throughout the progeny so they are said to be the means of true breeding they are not going to show any inbreeding depression but they can exhibit heterosis heterosis means uh, like they are not going to uh, produce any changes in the progeny but sometimes it can be progeny is more superior to the parents like uh, sometimes little bit superiority of the characteristics in progeny it can be uh, uh, it can appear here there is no recessive deleterious genes present uh, because due to the inbreeding because the way genes are fix, gene fixation is taking place here there is no effect of the recessive deleterious genes because uh, every gene uh, last time also i told every gene say if i talk for the height every gene 
is comprising of alternative forms which are said to be these are the alternative forms which are said to be alleles right this is the one that is shown in the capital this is said to be dominant and uh, this one is said to be recessive right this is said to be dominant and this is recessive now sometimes recessive genes show deleterious means dangerous effects but where gene fixation is taking place in the way that no recessive deleterious genes are present and if these are not present they are not going to show any deleterious effect also now we will discuss certain methods by which breeding in these autogamous species can take place you only need to remember the names uh, its explanation we will cover in the practical so these all are the methods by which uh, we can go for breeding in autogamous species very first is plant introduction then pure line selection mass selection pedigree method bulk method and single seed descent method instead of these Uh, methods there are more uh, methods like back cross method had process breeding uh, so these all are the methods by which we can breed self fertilizing species right these are the examples of uh, where self fertilization is taking place now we come to the concept if you have understood anything then it must be clear into your mind like when we are going for the self when we are going for breeding self fertilization species we notice like these are the true breeding lines and we called it as true breeding lines because of the reason that in these lines the genetic content throughout the progeny is remaining same that means i could say the all the lines are of homozygous nature so why we need to go for a, a breeding a self fertilizing species or if i say why we need to breed autogamous species and the reason is very the reason is very easy and simple we need to go for breeding self fertilization uh, fertilizing species because it is going to develop the homozygous varieties of such crops that means uh, uh, if we want uh, the variety to be similar in terms of all the characteristics we want the variety to be similar uh, in regard to the parent so uh, we look after the breeding of self fertilizing species and this is only the concept why we need to breed self fertilizing species that means we are looking after the development of homozygous varieties right so with this i complete breeding of uh, self fertilizing species and also the concept of breeding self fertilizing species next is all about cross pollinator species now in the cross pollinator species uh, uh, features are uh, will be opposite to the uh, to the self pollinator species that means these are cross fertilizing species here seed is produced by cross pollinations and the process is said to be allogamy because here allogamy is taking place so these are also referred to allogamous species very important these are said to be outbreeders so here what is happening when we talk for the two reproductive units that is a male and that another is female reproductive units within the flower then these two are not fertilizing among each other this pollen grains of these male part are carried to the stigma of another flower these are carried to the stigma of another part stigma this is one flower and the flower on to which these pollen grains are being transferred that is the another flower this another flower can be present on the same plant this can be present on the same plant or it is present on the different plant 
this is a single plant but the pollen grains uh, uh, the one, pollen grains if are fusing with the, these pollen grains when are fusing with the stigma of another flower this another flower may be present on the same flower a same plant or it may be present on the different plant in either case we call it as a cross pollination right so wh what are now we will discuss what are the features that are promoting the cross pollination very first is very clear either the flower is containing only male part second reason can be flower is contain consisting of only female part third is flower is consisting of both male and female flower but uh, male and female reproductive part but both are not maturing at the same time sometimes it can be they are maturing at the same time but there is certain barrier Uh, that is not a barrier among the two that is not allowing the male and female part to uh, fertilize together then next reason can be pollen grains they do not have the ability to fertilize the same flower that is present on the same plant and uh, if it is capable of fertilizing it may be like uh, there is absence of functional pollen grains the functional pollen grains are no more present i will give you all the scientific terms for the points that i have just discussed very first is dichogamy that is dichogamy is staminate means stamen and pistillate means a uh, uh, rep uh, female reproductive part both are maturing at the different times one mature earlier or the second mature earlier and the vice versa when both are not maturing uh, at the same time then at particular time cell pollination is no more taking place next is unisexuality that is it is the case in which males are either staminate that means only the male part is present or only female part is present that is said to be pistillate then heterostyly that means heterostyly means uh, normally what happens this used to be the heterostyly means this is the pollen grain normally if uh, these uh, two parts are to if these two parts are to fuse together then uh, the uh, this style length should match the length of this filament but here this is heterostyly that means uh, the style length is differing uh, as a result they are not reaching uh, near each other and as a result there is no chances of there are no chances of self pollination to take place hypergamy means there is certain mechanical barrier present among the two parts and uh, then is self incompatibility means pollen grains uh, is no more capable of uh, fertilizing the same flower or the other flower but on the same plant and uh, there are there may be the absence of functional pollen grain so these all are the uh, reasons uh, that promote cross pollination to take place so features are very uh, very uh, like clear here because uh, anything any pollen grain can cross with any any uh, male, female part so that means a uh, genetic content mating is very random random means we don't know what is going to fuse with the what that means random mating is taking place when random mating is taking place uh, ensure this is very much uh, uh, confirmed like genetic content is not going to remain the same Uh, as is present in case of the parents that means individuals very important that means individuals here are heterozygous and uh, we don't call it as a, a true uh, uh, as in the last we called them a uh, true breeding lines we cannot call it as a true breeding lines that means their progeny produced here is going to be very different from the one that is a parental one here Uh, within the cell fertilization because a uh, fixed uh, gene fixation was very much confirmed here gene fixation is not a uh, very much con uh, confirmed so individuals have deleterious recessive genes presence and uh, outbreeders are intolerant to inbreeding now they 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 will be showing a high degree of inbreeding depression uh, if they are self together means uh, if one had to say this variety is self to be the self means crossed with same heterozygous variety then it is showing to it is going to give you uh, the uh, expressions of inbreeding depression 
right then uh, new gene combinations are going to uh, combine together obviously uh, then uh, variability will also take place uh, they will be more adaptable because more is the genetic variation more will be the adaptability also and they will be flexible to the environmental changes also because they are heterozygous these all are the features and these are the methods by which we can go for breeding allogamous species like uh, these all are the methods i will be discussing these methods later on because right now we only need to focus on the concept of uh, uh, breeding uh, self pollinated cross pollinated and vegetative propagated species but out of these methods if we say uh, we need to improve the population then recurrent selection among all these methods recurrent selection disruptive mating and biparental mating it can be used for the improvement of population these all the other examples and uh, i am much sure like concept is uh, very much clear to you all if we are to produce the same lines if we are to produce the same lines which have the similar characteristics as are present in the parents that means if we are to produce the homozygous lines then we need to look after breeding of self pollinated species but on the other hand if we are not looking after the production of same lines we are not looking after the production of same line we don't want the lines to have same characteristics as that of parents that means if we want our population to be of heterozygous nature then we need to look after the heterozygous nature then we need to look after cross pollinator um, then we need to look after the breeding of cross pollinator species because nowadays what is the aim of the breeder aim of the breeder is to go for the production of hybrid varieties right so wherever seed production is economically feasible there we need to there we look after the hybrid varieties so the concept is very clear that is it is aiming at the improving the crop species but without reducing heterozygosity it this is very important so this is a concept of breeding uh, cross pollinator species third and the last one these are the asexually propagated species asexually propagated species means uh, these propagate by asexual means that means uh, either a part of the stem root or by other means uh, that means that the part is taken from the body uh, plant from the plant body certain part is excised and that itself is used for the propagation of species so here uh, uh, certain species are like Uh, these species can include both the self and both the cross pollinator species and uh, the main reason of asexual reproductions are we when we are looking after the reduced flowering non flowering to avoid in breeding depression or apomixis then we go for the asexual propagator species these are the creatures that means they propagate by asexual means uh, since they are propagating by asexual means so they are said to be vegetative propagator species and as i have already told you uh, it is found in both self and cross pollinator groups now the reasons that are that is promoting uh, out of these two groups the reason that promotes the cross pollination is uh, like it is very heterozygous a uh, broad genetic base it has wider adaptability and more flexi flexibility so these all the other reason due to which uh, cross pollinations take place in terms of asexually propagated species these are the further characteristics that resembles as a uh, uh, case of features these are the methods of breeding asexual propagated species you just uh, uh, need to remember the methods these are the examples so the concept is again very clear asexual reproduction produces a progeny because two categories are there so 
asexually when we are reproducing that means uh, uh, this is the plant we took the stem of the same plant and we propagated it further and it again resulted into the generation of new plant right that means uh, we can uh, come to the conclusion that means in this case also in asexual reproduction where there is no fusion among the uh, there is no fusion among male and female reproductive units that means here whatever progeny is going to be produced that is again going to resemble to the uh, self fertilizing one that is going to resemble to the parental one only that means if we don't focus over fertilizing species and if we focus over asexual reproduction then here the concept is very clear that means we are going to de derive the identical progeny in terms of genotype uh, so so this is the reason uh, this is the reason we go for the uh, breeding uh, of asexual reproduction because it is also going to give rise to the progeny that is resembling in terms of genetic content to its parental variety that means if we look after the preservation of genotype uh, up to the so and infinity time then we look after the asexual uh, reproduction or i say vegetative uh, will i look uh, i will look after the breeding of vegetative propagator species so with this i complete your second topic that is a concept of breeding self pros and vegetative propagator species now i'm left with the last topic that is a uh, breeding procedures before i talk for what all procedures are actually present i will make you familiar why we need to look after the breeding procedures like i told you number of the methods uh, uh, which are uh, uh, used for breeding the self fertilizing species or say pros fertilizing species or say uh, vegetative propagator species but why all those all those methodology is further comprising of 10 to 10 steps or a say of 12 steps that means so all the methodology they have a particular procedure which is to be followed out for having the results right but what what actually is meant by the breeding procedures why we need to adopt any procedure actually we need to follow the procedure of breeding because if we talk for the agencies then agencies also having uh, the trust that if we go for breeding new crops then it is going to ensure the food security because students it is very clear like in the coming years the rate of the rate of or say the number of uh, individuals uh, Uh, is going to uh, increase to a large and large extent that means population rate is going to increase to a larger extent but if we want this all population uh, we want the individuals of this population to survive we need to supply them food and if we follow the breeding procedures then then we can ensure the maximum we can strengthen the production of the food that means we can uh, ensure the food security because as a result of breeding procedures we we are going to have the varieties that are higher yielding that is resistant to pest and disease that is drought resistant and that can be adaptable to the different environment and growing conditions so this is a bit introduction of breeding procedures like why we need to follow particular procedure we need to follow particular procedure because it is going to strengthen the food production and if uh, food production is strengthened it is uh, going to give you a surety like food amount uh, that is uh, enough to make the survival of all the individuals of this population is being produced so it will be giving you uh, so it will it is going to giving you uh, food security right now i come to the breeding procedures very easy four kinds of breeding procedures are there very first is domestication then we have classical then we have modern and at the end we can also go for the genetic modification very first is the domestication uh, many of you must be familiar with this term uh, those who are not familiar i would like to inform like domestication is when any wild species 
when any wild species is taken from its natural habitat that means from jungles forest and it is uh, allowed to cultivate under the observation of human then we call it as a domestication that is domestication is an artificial selection obviously it is artificial selection because here wild species are taken from its natural environment and they are being introduced to the artificial environment that is created by the human itself right so when 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 uh, uh, like uh, when the growth of the wild species is under the human observation then we call that particular process as a domestication so it is an artificial selection that is conducted by the human so that a human could produce a plant that is having more desirable traits uh, as comparative to the wild plant right but here uh, in this artificial selection human is uh, allowing allowing the plant to be dependent on artificial environment right so that uh, their existence continues this is domestication next to domestication is classical plant breeding classical plant breeding it, it is actually involving deliberate interbreeding that means uh, uh, by knowingly we are uh, resulting in the interbreeding that is crossing of the two species now crossing can take place i uh, here three three things are there very first is we are going for the crossing in the crossing one individual is crossed to a distantly placed individual so that new crop varieties or lines can be produced but but very important with the desirable properties this is said to be crossing name itself introduce you crossing means crossing among two individuals or crossing among two species is taking place but the thing to notice is crossing is taking place between the two species but among the species that are distantly placed that means distant crossing is taking place but results must be desirable second is back crossing when these two parents will cross obviously they are going to give rise to the progeny and uh, these features of these parents are they are good in uh, certain characteristics one used to be good in certain characteristics either one parent used to be good either the both the parents used to be uh, good if we have only one uh, one parent uh, Uh, with the desirable characteristics then what we go for the next crossing that is said to be back crossing here progeny is back crossed with the parent that is having the desirable features or we can say with the parent that is high yielding to ensure that when this cross is carried out then again the progeny that is being produced is also high yielding progeny and third is plants may be if this is the parent taken this parent may be crossed with itself only so that inbred varieties these these varieties which are pre produced these are said to be in inbred varieties so that inbred varieties could be produced so this is all about classical plant breeding procedures that involves three types of crosses uh, one cross is a distant distant hybridization second is back crossing where progeny is crossed with one of the more with the parent that is having more desirable features and third is parent is crossed with itself only so this is a classical plant breeding the next is modern the next is a, okay these all are the certain features of classical plant breeding like here quality yield can be improved tolerance to environmental pressures can be increased it a variety could be made resistance to attack of all these microorganisms uh, it could be made uh, tolerant to insect pest and uh, attack of herbicide okay now next is modern plant breeding modern that means certain technologies are now introduced along with the plant breeding and the technologies that are used is actually molecular biology 
because molecular biology is the one that select or goes for the genetic modification and it is required to select insert the desirable traits into the plant because uh, uh, all you are talking for the breeding you are talking for the modifications of genes like as i said this is the dna you are going very first for the modification of this gene then you are going for the modification of this gene but how you are modifying and any question any any doubt like how how these genes are being modified actually these are uh, it is not like we are looking after very first we need to look after the plant that is give, that is having the desirable gene then this gene is to be replaced by this desirable gene but it is not uh, uh, not uh, the way like we can pick this gene with the hand and then we can uh, remove it from this dna and this then we will pick this gene and this will be placed here no uh, such concepts don't take place actually uh, this changing uh, it is to be actually cut from this area and instead of this area uh, new gene is to be inserted this remove selection removal and insertion it is all uh, with the it is all easy just due to the existence of the branch of the biotechnology that is said to be molecular biology so with the help of molecular biology it has converted classical breeding to the molecular plant breeding right so here we are all introducing the techniques of molecular biology and these techniques are introduced to select select means uh, select the desirable gene then insert the desirable gene into the plants now we are left with the uh, we also have marker assisted selection here what is done selection is on the basis of features that means a more morphological biochemical right and on this uh, basis we used to attach one marker marker uh, marker is attached to the uh, desirable feature and uh, that marker helps to uh, that marker helps to uh, further helps to uh, go for the selection of the desirable trait for example when you read a, a book you used to have many lines but the ones you find uh, important you go for uh, you go for highlighting those lines right you in this way you highlight the lines and uh, that uh, that will make you uh, familiar with the important one lines out of the whole content of a particular page in this way if we are to select uh, if we are to select the desirable features from a number of uh, features then we attach marker and this marker helps in the selection of the desirable trait so this is also the breeding procedure next is a genetic modification in genetic modification what is being done we are going for the modification of the genes either we are inserting a particular gene that is of desire or we are knocking the gene that is no more desired so that a desirable phenotype could be produced so this is all about your today's topic uh, where i very first discussed the breeding objectives like why we need to go for the breeding then i discussed uh, what is like uh, on the basis of mode of pollination and reproduction we are basically having three categories but what is the concept like why we need to go for a uh, uh breeding self pollinated species or why we need to go for breeding cross pollinated species and uh, why we need to go for breeding the vegetatively propagated species i told you before i actually uh, allowed you to know about the concept i made you familiar with the features of these species i made you familiar with the reasons that uh, that is actually allowing a particular pollination to take place and then finally when you were familiar with the features uh, then i finally introduce with uh, you with the concept of plant breeding of all those species and uh, at the end i told you there are various breeding procedures uh, then i introduced you with uh, what is the introduction of breeding procedure like uh, in the breeding procedure uh, we used to have a, a particular protocol that is to be followed and uh, what is the reason behind following of that particular protocol and uh, what are the various uh, procedures that could be used for modification of the genetic content of uh, say any crop species so this was all about from my side thank you so much and uh, special thanks to you all uh, 
special thanks to your CR Santosh and to you all that you uh, out of this uh, 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 running of the festival, you took your certain schedule out and uh, allowed me to take the class. Thank you for your cooperation. Thank you so much.